to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History and a few other Tudor history books. Today, I'm taking back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I for On This Day in Tudor History, the 6th of December, 1573. Soldier and administrator, Sir Hugh Paulette, died at his home in Hinton St George in Somerset. He was buried in the parish church there. Paulette distinguished himself at the siege of Boulogne under Henry VIII and served King Edward VI as governor of Jersey. In Mary I's reign, he was made vice president of the Welsh marches and in Elizabeth I's reign, he served as a special advisor to Ambrose Dudley, Earl of Warwick at Le Havre. So an important man. And it's amazing that he managed to serve four Tudor monarchs and died a natural death. Let me tell you a bit more about this Tudor man. Sir Hugh Paulette was born in the first decade of the 16th century and was the eldest son of landowner and soldier Sir Amias Paulette and his second wife, Laura Carlway. Paulette was admitted to Middle Temple, one of London's four inns of the court, at some point in his youth. And in 1530, he married Philippa Pollard, daughter of Sir Lewis Pollard. The couple went on to have five children, three sons and two daughters. In 1532, Paulette served on the Commission of Peace for Somerset and in 1534 he became steward to the Bishop of Bath and Wells, a post held previously by his father. In 1535 he served as a commissioner for Thomas Cromwell's Valor Ecclesiasticus, a survey of the finances of the church and on the 18th of July 1536 he was knighted. It is thought that he came to Cromwell's notice through the influence of his brother-in-law, Richard Pollard. In late 1536, at the outbreak of the Pilgrimage of Grace Rebellion, Paulette was called to Ampthill to attend on the king, and then he led 300 men against the rebels. In 1536 and 1537, he also served as Sheriff of Somerset and Dorset. In 1539, Paulette was appointed to inspect coastal defences in Somerset and served on the Council of the West in 1539 and 1540 and as a senior Knight of the Shire for Somerset at Parliament. In the 1540s, he served as Sheriff for the counties of Devon, Somerset and Dorset and in 1544, he served the King in France, distinguishing himself at the Siege of Boulogne. He then acted as treasurer of Boulogne from 1544 to 1546. In 1549, at the fall of Edward VI's uncle, Thomas Seymour, Paulette was sent to Seymour's house at Bromham in Wiltshire to take charge of the property. He then served under John Russell as knight marshal against the rebels of the Prayer Book Rebellion, leading with Sir Peter Carew troops that defeated the main body of rebels at King's Weston in Somerset on the 27th of August 1549. On the fall of Edward Seymour, Duke of Somerset and Lord Protector, who had been Governor of Jersey, Paulette was sent to the island where he dismissed Somerset's lieutenant and reported back on the state of the fortifications. In March 1550, Paulette was made Governor of Jersey for life and he set about using money from the church there to modernise the island's fortifications. He also set about enacting Protestant reforms there, for example, ordering the Book of Common Prayer to be translated into French. But then the Catholic Mary I came to the throne. Even though he appears to have been a staunch Protestant, Paulette was obviously able to put his faith to one side and conform in Mary I's reign. He held on to his governorship under Mary, appointing his conservative brother John as Dean of Jersey. But no Protestants were burnt on the island for heresy. From 1559, following the accession of Elizabeth I, Paulette passed the day-to-day -day administration of Jersey to his son Amias, who was appointed lieutenant, while he returned to England. In 1559, Paulette served as vice president of the Welsh Marches. In 1560, Paulette, who'd been widowed at some point, married Elizabeth Blunt, daughter of Walter Blunt and widow of Sir Thomas Pope. The marriage was childless. In December 1562, Paulette was sent to Le Havre, or New Haven as the English called it, 
a special advisor to Ambrose Dudley, Earl of Warwick, following the handing over of Le Havre to Elizabeth by the Huguenots, according to the terms of the Treaty of Hampton Court. Unfortunately, Paulette and Warwick had to negotiate the town's surrender to France in July 1563, following a siege and heavy bombardment. Following his return from Le Havre, Paulette settled at his home in Hinton St George in Somerset, serving on the Commission of the Peace for Dorset, Somerset and Devon, and as a Member of Parliament. Sir Hugh Paulette died on the 6th of December 1573 and was laid to rest in a tomb he'd commissioned for himself and his first wife Philippa at the local church. A bit of trivia now. His eldest son, Amias, was the Sir Amias Paulette who served as jailer to Mary Queen of Scots and he was the man who Elizabeth I wanted to quietly do away with the Queen, i.e. murder her, under the bond of association. So she didn't have to execute her. He refused. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about a rebel leader who ended up being hanged from Norwich Castle's walls and his brother hanged from a local church steeple. Do make sure you're subscribed, click right there, and that you've hit the bell so you don't miss that video. Last year on the 6th of December, I talked about the Feast of St Nicholas, which is celebrated on the 6th of December, and how it was the traditional day for a boy bishop to be elected. Find out more about the tradition, why Henry VIII banned it, and how it's been revived today in last year's video. You'll find a link to that in the description. Thank you for joining me today. Please do give me a like and feel free to leave a comment. I'll see you very soon. Take care.